Hi, I'm Hari Prasad. I'm the co-founder of UpBuild, which is an organization dedicated to leadership development, where we try to become our best self by realizing what is getting in the way. If we want to be our best, we have to see what's stopping us, what's blocking us, and that is the ego. We define the ego at UpBuild as the identity that we think we should be, as opposed to who we actually are. And today I was asked to speak on the subject of you rise when your pride falls. That's something which uh, is an honor for me. And I also hope that you've been enjoying your experience at the Toronto Rapayatra virtually. It's a special opportunity. I've been so many times in person and uh, it's been extremely meaningful for my wife Radha Bhakti and I and we're happy to be joining you virtually. So you rise when your pride falls. What does that mean? As soon as we have this sense that we are great, we are out of touch, <laughs> and it's only a matter of time before we're brought to our knees, unfortunately. I have this experience again and again and again in my own life. As soon as I think I'm something special, I'm something exceptional, I'm something great, I am humbled. And that sounds really unpleasant. That sounds like unfair or demotivating. We go to all these motivational talks so that we can be pumped up. You are amazing. You are so awesome. You know, you never, people never understood. You never understood what you're made of, but you're incredible. Well, yes, there is truth to that. And at the same time, paradoxically, the way that we get to that truth is not by a pep talk where we say how awesome we are, but it's by being real. It's by being in touch with where we're really at, being so grounded. So I'll give you a little example. When I was a young monk, so I was a monk for five years, and we began upbuild in a monastery, believe it or not. This was on a quest for trying to become my best self and determining that it would be really selfish to keep these teachings that we were uncovering in the monastery to ourselves. So we built up build as a community of seekers for the sake of sharing the wealth. And um, at that time, I became a teacher of a book called the Bhagavad Gita. Maybe some of you know this very well, some of you have heard the name, and some of you don't know it at all. I didn't know it for most of my life, but in the monastery, this was our prime sacred text, the Bhagavad Gita. And it really serves the mission of Upbuild, of getting us in touch with who we really are, beyond our ego identities, beyond the sense of who we think we should be. So I was starting to teach back in 2008. I was out of school for a couple of years, out of college, and I began this teaching work. And I thought, well, if I'm gonna teach this wisdom, then I better have mastered it, understandably. But the problem with that is, I had not mastered it. And to this day, I have not mastered it. And yet I still teach it. So should nobody show up? Are we frauds? I hope not. I do worry about that. <laughs> but no, I, I understand that teaching is not a matter of needing to master a subject. It's a way of helping us on the way to mastery. It's a way of holding ourselves accountable and trying to be authentic in what we're sharing as it bolsters our own realizations. And so I had this misconception that it was incumbent on me as a teacher that I would have to be the exemplar. I would have to be the one who knows what's what and lives the ideal life. And I would project myself as such. I would get out there, it was very subtle. It's not that you could necessarily tell that this is how 
I was feeling because I wanted to be humble and I wanted to, the teachings of the Gita are to be humble. Uh, but there was something subtle going on where I thought I needed to project myself a certain way to command the respect that was necessary for the role that I played. It was innocent. I thought it was actually a service, but again, the ego is there and will use that to interpret it according to its own knowledge. The ego only knows how to project something that we're not and to try to get accolades and try to be the best that we can be in other people's eyes rather than as we are. So I didn't realize, because this was innocent, I didn't realize the effect that it was having. And the fact of the matter was, I was getting all kinds of applause. I'll never forget the first talk that I ever gave. I got a standing ovation and it felt triumphant. It was so amazing. And the truth is, it was a beautiful experience. It was a divine experience. I was being used as an instrument I could feel. What I didn't understand was that it's possible to be used consistently in a sustainable and even more satisfying way if we remove the ego identifications, if we move, remove the sense of expectation that I have to be something great, right? So what I learned after quite some time is I didn't need to project anything. I could be humbly who I was, where I was at, and share my struggles genuinely. Not raw, but my vulnerability that I was processing rather than dumping onto people. I was learning and growing and processing what I was going through and sharing it really with others and trusting people, even my students, with that knowledge and with that vulnerability. And you know what I found? It was incredible. I found that as wonderful as the experience of teaching was prior to that time, I could never connect so heart to heart with people. I could never transmit what I felt was the calling, what I knew was the calling to offer the wisdom of the Bhagavad Gita, the wisdom of being the real self, the soul, and not the ego, it was being blocked by a distance. I was a little bit in an ivory tower. It's the truth that I had to learn over time that I didn't need to be in that ivory tower. And so today, one of the most powerful things I've understood is that I just need to be me. And this goes directly with the mission of Upbuild. And this goes directly with the subject of our talk this day, that we really only rise when we can become humble, when we let go of our pride and the expectations of ourself to project something which is really a self on top of a self. We can never feel good about ourselves as long as we're pumped up, as long as we're projecting. It, we only feel satisfied and the most effective agents of transformation for the benefit of others, which we all need in this time. This world needs change agents desperately. We know it. We know it from COVID-19. We know it from the horrible racism. We know it from all of the suffering, the poverty, and everything that creates instability and inequality in the environment that is going to hell, right? So we know we need change agents. But do we want change agents who are proud of themselves, of some image that they've concocted, something they think they should be, and they want the world to clap for? Or do we need change agents who have the courage to be authentically as they are, full-bodied and unafraid, sharing themselves wholly and wholeheartedly? Imagine the impact of that. 
That is my experience again and again and again. When I show up truly with my heart and when I'm real, when I'm not trying to be something or pretend I'm more advanced in my spiritual life or in my material life than I actually am, when I can just be, that is the most satisfying and the most impactful consistently ongoingly. So that's what I want to offer to you today. I pray that something here has been meaningful for you and that you can apply this teaching to your own life that we don't need pride. If we want to rise, what we need is to be courageous enough to be who we are. Thank you very, very much.